Let's begin. So, I've got three example questions for you. In the first example question, a small ball of mass, 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms, and a charge of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs, is suspended in air above an electrically charged plate. Now, for today, all of these objects are going to be suspended. When we get to the next... Uh, next set, you're going to find that they're not going to be suspended, there's going to be a net force. So when I say suspended, what I really mean balanced. is that the net force is zero, they're balanced, correct. Above an electrically charged plate, what field strength is required to suspend this particle in air? Let's write down what we actually know. We know the net force is zero because it's suspended. The mass 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6, and I'm not going to require you to do this, I do it with my grade nines. It's a good way to get started. If it helps you to do this, I strongly encourage you to do that. And you may ease out of it, too. Here's the charge. The charge is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10. Why don't they just give us a regular, like, instead of the 6.5 times 10 to the negative Because it's scientific notation. You have to get used to it, Nate. Engineers do this. Yeah, I keep rubbing out my face. They're just going to Well, if you're interested, you're going to have to... Follow the conventions. 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10. What field strength is required to suspend this particle in the air? So we are solving for E. Now there's one missing um, number that's not given in the questionnaire. Gravity. Gravity. 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm going to start with a picture. There's the oil drop. The electric force is up. And the weight force is down. And because the net force is zero, those two are equal to each other. One is up and one is down. I'm just going to pause there and let you sort of soak that in. Any, any questions about any of that? What's going on here? Okay, we are looking for the field strength. So Fe... We've written field strength as E equals F over Q, but that can be rearranged for F is equal to Q times E. The weight force is M times G. Those two things are equal to each other. Okay? So which is the one that we're trying to find? We're trying to find the field strength. We're solving for E, so I've got to determine the M times G first. That's my first step. So the mass is 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 times 9.8. And I'm going to pause here and I'm going to give you a chance to try that on, the, on your calculator just to give you another opportunity to use scientific notation. 6.37 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, now that is equal to, that's the weight force, that is what's equal to the electric force. So over here you're going to write Fe is equal to Qe. 6.37 times 10 to the minus 5. The charge is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10. And this is why I showed you all that scientific notation stuff before. So your electric field strength is 6.37 times 10 to the minus 5 all over 1.5 times 10 to the minus 10. Use your calculator properly. I get 4246667 or 4.25 times 10 to the 5. And what do we measure E in? Newtons per coulomb. How much do you think something like that would be worth? I'd say five words. Well, you'd be wrong because it's really just two steps. You're mean. Right? I might be generous and say, okay, I'll give you a mark for drawing this. You don't have to, but it sort of, you know, helps to focus your thinking, right? 
It shows if all you did was this, then you have at least shown me that you understand that the electric force and the weight force are balanced, right? And if you mess up here, then I can maybe give you some mark, right? If you show me what you do know, I can reward you. But really, that's not that hard of a question. The only thing that makes it hard is the crazy scientific notation, and you're just going to have to get used to it. Okay, it's kind of like the web. You're just going to have to get used to it. Okay? If the Colombians had shown up now, today, they would have just jumped right back in the bus and gone home. Now they're seasoned. Let's have a look at example number two. A small sphere of mass 7.0 times 10 to the minus 8 kilograms is suspended in midair above a charged plate. At the point in the air, the electric field is 300 newtons per coulomb. What charge is on the sphere? This is actually what Millikan did. He was finding out the charge, Q. The mass is 7.0 times 10 to the minus 8. Yep, suspended in midair, the F net is zero. Gravity is 9.8. The electric field is 300. And we are solving for Q. Oh. Go ahead. Um, All right, what's different about this question from the previous one? Not really a whole lot. The only thing that's different is this time we're solving for Q. So once again, the electric force is up. The weight force is down. I would expect to see you write FW is equal to mg. The mass is 7.0 times 10 to the minus 8. G is 9.8. The number you're always going to get after multiplying by 9.8 is going to be a number that's really close to this one. So it's going to be 7.0. It's going to be like 6 point something. Sure. Focus. 6.86 times 10 to the minus 7. Because this value is almost 10, your exponent is always going to change by a single value. It's going to go from minus 8 to minus 7. Here it went from uh, minus 6 to minus 5. Generally, what I like to say is if there's one decimal place here, you should give me 2 here. So I would round it at 6.86. Okay, now that's equal to the electric force. Why is it equal to the electric force? Because it's balanced, okay? <coughs> F net is zero, exactly. So the Fe is the same thing and that's equal to Qe. Uh, 6.86 times 10 to the minus 7. We're solving for Q and the E value is 300. So Q is equal to 6.86 times 10 to the minus 7, and I have to divide by 300. Because the E is the 300 here, right? You're dividing both sides by 300. 2.29 times 10 to the minus... 9, what do we measure charge in? Coulombs. Coulombs. So far, don't flip the page over. So far, that's pretty much the same as the previous question, right? Now, Millikan, I want to I wanna talk a little about this here, because I didn't say what unit to put the charge on, okay? So what Millikan found out was this. I'm just going to insert a blank page here. Okay. Yeah, you can't answer that. Or is it me? I'm waiting on an MRI call, so I might have to take this. Okay, if I gave you these numbers, can you tell me what's the smallest number? Or what are these all multiples of? Three. 
everyone can see that, right? 6, 9, 15, 27. Everyone knows that they can go, that 3 is the smallest number that will go evenly into all those, right? Okay. That's what Millikan did, except his numbers weren't easy like that. His numbers were like this. Okay, and they wouldn't be perfect like that either. They would be a little bit off because when you measure in real life, well, you don't get perfect answers, right? I made these up to be perfectly multiples of three. I made these perfectly up to be multiples of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. But he didn't have that luxury, nor did he have a luxury of a computer or a calculator. So he would have taken all of these values and graphed them and got sort of a straight line and figured out the slope, and the slope would have been about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, because as you go up, that's how much it goes up by, right? You multiply by 1 or 2, uh, 3, and so on. So you got to think about, did he do this like in an afternoon kind of thing? No. He spent multiple months doing this together and graphing, right? No calculator, no computer, just graph paper and his brain. Okay, so he came up with this value. So. Back to our question here. I want to know what charge this is in elementary charges. In elementary charges. Now, the um, shorthand, the abbreviation for elementary charges is ELCHES. E-L-C-H. Elementary charge. And an elementary charge is really equal to the charge on a single electron. Right. The charge on a single electron. So 2.29 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs is how many electrons? Okay. Way back in about grade 8 you learned about ratio and proportion. It's probably the one or two things that you actually learn in math that are actually used by everyday real people. Addition. Not well, besides addition and subtraction, right? So <laughs> one elementary charge is equivalent to one point six times ten to the minus nineteen coulombs. So X elementary charges is 2.29 times 10 to the minus 9. Do you remember doing that in about grade 8 or so? Really? Well, not, not with the numbers like that, but like, I mean, like, you know, the cross multiply stuff. Oh, Ratio yeah. and proportion. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we're going to cross multiply here, and we're going to get, get that phone away. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. X is equal to 1 times that, which is going to be, well, just that. And, and now, yeah, now we're going to divide. Now, many people will say, Mr. Ben, how come I can't just divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19? You can go right ahead and do that with one, one rule. You're not allowed to ask me on the test, do I divide or do I multiply? That's the only rule, because I'm not going to tell you. If you want to skip all this, be my guest, but you better remember that if you're going from Coulombs to elementary charges, you're going to divide, and if you're going from elementary charges to Coulombs, you're going to multiply. I'm not answering that question. The way to get around it is just write that out, and then you can't go wrong. One elementary charge is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So X elementary charges. Notice that I've got elches and elches on the top, and here I've got coulomb and coulomb on the bottom. You can't go wrong if you can solve that by cross <laughs> multiplying. You'll never make a mistake, whether it's multiply or divide. If you choose to do the shorthand the easy way and just divide, be my guest. But I'm not going to help you on whether you multiply or divide. And I guarantee there will be at least three people in here that will ask me, do I multiply or divide on the test? I know you will, because it happens every year. What's the answer? Is that last unit before the exam? Uh, I might throw a few th other things. We've still got another couple weeks. Yeah. Okay. yeah.
Coulombs to elementary charges is divided. Coulombs to elementary charges is divided. And then Yep. 2.29 exponent 9 divided by 1.6 exponent 19. And you're going to get some pretty big number actually. 1.43 times 10 to the 10 ultras. You would need um, 14 billion electrons to come up with that charge. 1.43 times 10 to the 10 elementary charge. On your, like, we're still doing questions here. So, this is the part of the question. Okay. So, it didn't say so in the question, but I've expanded that. How much would this be worth now? Well, just, yeah, just three, because, I mean, weight force, charge, and that. Uh, that's the number I'm looking for. Right? If you can do you can choose to skip this step if you want. If you want to just divide, be my guest. Alex, put the phone away, Matt. Yeah, really? You're sitting there, you're you're so used to it that you're actually sitting there in that with your head down like this. It's like you're imagining you're playing with your phone. Yes. Wow. Yep. To convert cool homes to houses. You just said that to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to expand on this one more step. I know, I can see people are still right. You can do this. Hundreds of grade 11 physics students have done it before you, and hundreds will do it behind you. He did just fine. Yeah, I think you got 100% on a test in grade 12. What? I think you got 100% on a test in grade 12. Mm -hmm. Wait, you studied a lot of them. You wouldn't know them. You did. Hello, keep me here last year. Alright, time for a hard one. Time for a hard one. Now, Milliken did not have the ability to just weigh an oil droplet. Okay? He had to use terminal velocity and the viscosity of oil and blah, 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 and terminal velocity and blah, 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 blah. Okay? It was quite challenging. I am simulating that by making you do an additional step. Two steps, actually. Okay? Here, he used, I'm going to say that he used uh, a microscope and measured the radius. Okay? And using the radius, you're going to calculate the volume. And then using density equals mass over volume, you're going to calculate the mass. So basically, I'm taking this question here and I'm backing it up where I'm not going to give you the mass. I'm going to give you the radius and you have to calculate the mass. Okay, so there's going to be two additional steps here. Okay? You may also need to convert centimeters to meters. Okay, it's going to be a five step process. If you do not like showing your work and showing your steps, this is the moment that you have to start doing that. You may have avoided up to now. You now have to do it. You need to know how to convert centimeters to meters. So, let's read this here. An oil droplet of radius 0 0.0006 centimeters. So, let's write R equals 0 0.0006 is located in a Millikan apparatus. It's suspended in midair above a 0.3 Newton per coulomb electric field. So E is equal to 0 0.3. The density of oil is 800. That, my friends, is a constant. We will use that number at all times. And they're asking you to determine the charge of the droplet in coulomb. So I think this might be a six step. That's why I gave you an entire page. If you're one of those people that writes in 48 point font, in handwriting, stop, because you're going to need room for six steps. Hopefully you haven't started in the middle of the workspace. D. Yeah. Density is 800. Okay, so here's the steps. I'm going to go from radius to volume. 
to mass, to weight force, to charge, to charge in, in oh, it says in coulombs, you're lucky. Those are the steps. I'll be perfectly blunt. This is training for, for grade 12. That's what this is. You know what, you guys? You're a, year, you're a year more mature. You've got a year more math under your belt. It's really not any more hard. In fact, in some ways, it's simpler. I encourage you to come and visit it. Okay. How do I go from radius to volume? First step, this is in centimeters. The first thing I need you to do is take 0 0.0006 centimeters. How do you go to meters? Divide by 100. How come? Because there's 100 centimeters in a meter. So it's going to be two more, right? 0, 0, point 0, 0. Those are the two more. And then the ones from before, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. All I did there was convert centimeters to meters. Again, I am simulating some of the steps that Millikan had to go through. It's because it's much smaller than one, right? And I'm really trying to go slow here and take my time. That's the same thing. All I did was move the decimal place. So it's point. Yep. So it's point zero 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 six meters. Yep. Okay. Next step is to turn that into volume. Anyone just happen to know how to find the volume of a sphere from the radius? Long That's not R2D2. Oh, good. It's it's volume. Oh, like Four thirds pi R cubed. Volume of a sphere is four thirds pi R cubed. You may or may not have ever seen that before. I don't know. Yeah, well, because it's 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 basically length times width times height for a for a circle, right? So it's four thirds of pi. Four thirds of pi times the radius cubed. Four thirds pi six times ten to the minus six to the power of three. And yes, if you don't know how to use scientific notation in your calculator, it's definitely time. I can show you the answer and then you can try to match it or you can try it and I can show you the answer. What do you prefer? Okay. So on my calculator, I'm going to go 4 divided by 3 times, and I use the pi button. I use the pi button. Yes, you do. If you have a scientific calculator, you have a pi button. 4 times 3 times pi times 6 exponent 6 negative to the power of 3. You should have like a y to the power of x. Some of you will have a y cubed or an x cubed or something rather. I screwed up. 4 divided by 3 times pi times 6 exponent 6 negative x to the y 3 oh I've got like an overflow here I've blown my calculator out you put 6 to the power of negative 6 and then 3 yeah. and then 2 power of negative 6 my calculator can't seem to handle numbers this big I get a really small number, 9.05 times 10 to the minus 16. I'll stop there for a second and let you try it. 16. What's the units on that, by the way? Good. 
meters cubed. Now, here's the good news, my friends. If you screw up there, I will follow through your mistake. You're only going to lose that one mark. Okay? But you have to show me how you got that. Okay? If you messed up there, like say you forget to cube it, or you forget to convert this, right? If you forget to convert it to meters, I will follow through your mistake. As long as I can follow your solution and I can see what you've done. It's so, so important for you to show your work and your steps. That's why I was pressing you back three months ago about it. All I've done now, oops, all I've done now is convert to volume. What's the next step? I gotta get the mass. Do you remember way back when we started this little adventure? You learned about the formula D equals M over V, density equals mass over volume. There's a reason why I taught it back then, and that's because of today. The density of this particular oil is 800. We're going to solve for M using this volume right here. <coughs> and you're going to multiply. I get 7.24 times 10 to the minus 13 kilograms. 7.24, yes. That's not very much mass, is it? We're talking about a little teeny tiny microscopic drop of oil here. Almost. Okay. I've now gotten us to the point where we were in this question, right? I've now gotten to the mass, and now what do I do? The same steps that I did here. All I did was take this and back up a couple steps, right? So yes, next step, from uh, we've got mass, now convert to weight force. Hopefully you are left yourself enough space. Fw is equal to m times g, 7.24. Times 10 to the 13, multiplied by 9.8. Now, again, if you do some sort of weird rounding along the way, if I can see the steps and I can duplicate with my calculator, this problem takes me forever to mark, okay? You might think that it's impossible for you to do. Think about how hard it is for me to mark. Because guaranteed, I, I can't, unfortunately, everyone in the room is not going to get 100% on this. It's not going to happen. Would I love it if it would happen? Absolutely. Statistically, I've never seen that, right? Well, if you guys can prove me wrong, that'd be great. Because it's certainly a lot easier to mark when you get it right. It's hard to mark when it's wrong. I didn't say that. I said everyone in the class is not going to get it. Oh, in this class? Yeah. Like when I mark these, I'm not going to give like six out of six to everyone. So there's people are going to make boo-boos along the way, right? It makes it hard for me to mark. I have to spend just as long to mark every one of yours as it takes me to write it. So it keeps it real. So what are we even trying to find? What are we trying to find? The charge of the droplet in coulombs. I've now got the weight force. What's the next step? To go from FW to Q. How do I do that? Remember it's suspended. So F. E is equal to QE, and I probably should have left a little more space because that's starting to crowd into that one up there. What's my FE? This number here. Can we use a number like that? Yeah, absolutely. What's the electric field strength? 0.3. So Q equals that number there, oh, negative 12, divide by 0.3, and I get a value of 2.36 times 10 to the minus 11 coulombs. No, 
this is part. This is one of the things you got to do. Is that negative eleven or twelve? Negative eleven. If I asked you for that in ele elementary charges, what would be the next step? Um, to divide by that 1.6 number, right? Yeah. Okay. That's all I have for you. I'm going to give you a sheet here. There are only seven. From that. <laughs> this is one of those things that you just have to practice to get good at. Okay, so here's the Milliken worksheet. There's a picture of Milliken. You can draw a mustache on him, curse him, because he's created such grief for you. Pretty harsh language there, Nate. The formulas are there in case you've lost them or forgotten them. The answers are at the bottom. I've given you a link to the solutions as well as a QR code to those solutions as well. Awesome. Okay? Thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome. They get progressively harder as you go down. If you're finding them easy, that's wonderful. Go to the next one. Okay? It won't get any harder than number seven. Please do one last thing for me. Question number seven. Everybody look at question number seven. I've thrown one extra wrinkle in there for you. Read the question and see if you can spot it. What is the extra wrinkle that I've thrown in number seven? Oh, the diameter, not the radius. The diameter, not the radius. So in question number seven right now, and I see some people doing it already, good for you, underline or put a box or circle the word diameter. What do you have to do? Divide it by two. Divide it by two. I got four okay. Okay. Go to the box. Did I open?